Hey, everybody, and welcome to a brand new podcast. It's so brand new. I'm going to look at my document here to make sure I have the title right. Uh, It's called The Split. It's a YA book review podcast, both for readers and for writers. I'm Brian Cohen, the author of the Ted Saves the World series, and I'm here with Robert Scanlon, my co-host, the author of The Dreamer Chronicles. How are you doing from Australia today? Bright and sunny, thank you, Brian. Yeah, how are you doing today? I'm great. Uh, it's your high point, beginning of the day. I'm at my low, yep. 5 p.m. in Chicago. But I'm going to make it because this is really exciting. We came up with this idea. We wanted to find a podcast that could both serve readers and writers and in a genre that we write in, in young adult fiction. And I think that it's going to, I I think we could find some people who would like this sort of thing. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's a great idea to have a short burst show where we can really take some of the more popular young adult books and some of the up and coming ones and give a snapshot of a review, maybe interest someone in a genre they've never come across before, maybe inspire some writers to think about different ways that they could turn their stories. So yeah, I'm really excited. Good, good. It would it would be a shame if neither of us was. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this is the boring the split podcast um, right. but since we're going to keep it short let's start with our first book we're going to talk about mocking jay the third book Ooh. in the hunger games trilogy which uh the mocking jay part one is just a few weeks out in the states from coming out is is it coming out in november in australia too i, I think our timing is the same as yours okay yeah. Good. I know the big, big ones, they tend to try to get them out at the same time. But I read this book a a while back. The first time I read it was uh, I read the entire Hunger Games trilogy in four days. I loved the first two. And the third went in a really different direction. But I, I wrote down a little description here of what the book, what Amazon says the book is about. So I'll read that first. What? I'd love to hear that. Okay, let's hear what Amazon says Mockingjay is about. Against all odds, Katniss Everdeen has survived the Hunger Games twice, but now that she's made it out of the bloody arena alive, she's still not safe. The Capitol is angry. The Capitol wants revenge. Who do they think should pay for the unrest? Katniss. And what's worse, President Snow has made it clear that no one else is safe either. Not Katniss's family, not her friends, not the people of District 12. So that's the big line of uh, what what Mockingjay is about. I know we have some different opinions on Mockingjay from a reader's perspective. I want to hear your thoughts first. What What did you think about Mockingjay as a reader? Well, like you, Brian, I read all three books pretty fast. But here's the interesting thing. I read them in reverse order. Because I was curious from a writer's point of view, I picked up Mockingjay thinking, well, that's got to be the best book, right? Because it's got the climax. Uh, and I read it and I was, I liked it. You know, I thought, but wow, there's an enormous amount of mayhem towards the end of this book. And there were a lot of things I didn't really understand. I didn't really understand why Katniss was just so inactive and passive at times and it wasn't really until i backtracked through and in reverse order so i then read catch and fire and then the hunger games and i really loved the hunger games i thought that was fantastic uh catching fire was good um and then when i contrasted that with my experience of mocking jay i thought i was a little disappointed that somehow that that you know ever kicking ever fighting spirited girl who wanted to take her on the injustices in the world somehow just didn't cut it for me in Mockingjay, even though I can understand where the overall story went. So, um, yeah, it was, it was really interesting. That's so cool that you read them backwards. Do you do that with a lot of your series? that you read? Uh, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> it just happened that way with that particular one. Normally I'm really steadfast about right, you know, reading them in the right order because you figure, well, that's what the author wanted. Yeah. Right. The, the, the arc. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but yeah, it was, it was interesting. And, uh, I challenge anyone to do that with uh, the hunger game series and, and, uh, see if they come up with the same observations. Yeah. Yeah. No, I go for it. Try whatever you can. But for me as a reader perspective, 
I I mean, there's a lot of people that don't like the ending, and I won't necessarily spoil it here, but I thought the ending was really ballsy for Suzanne Collins to do because this is not a Hollywood ending, and I'm really interested to see how Hollywood treats it. And, it, you know, from what I've seen in trailers, it doesn't seem like from the first part of the book that it... It, all the scenes seem like they were in there in the movie in one way in in the book in one way or another in general the book less plot there was still a lot of action at the end but generally less action because they're mostly hanging out in district 13 and trying to do these advertising pieces of of catness yes. i i upon a second read and and whenever you're a writer reading when you read it for the second time you can't you don't read for plot anymore you you start to really pick up on things and just so much of the book was focused on these prop pieces uh these propaganda pieces of Katniss and I didn't realize that the first time I read it mostly because I was reading it so fast to try to get to the end uh we already love or hate the characters that we know in the book. So at this point, we're just willing as readers to go along with this and see where she takes us. And they definitely went in a different direction than was, than was expected. No question about that. I think if you read reviews on on Amazon or Goodreads, you'll see the polarization for sure. And and uh, and I think that you know we're representative of that. Perhaps I I felt that I was let down by the overall arc. Although I I like the book. I, don't get me wrong. I think it's extremely well written. Um, and I like the internalization of the the damaged goods that Katniss has become because of everything she's been put through. And and that probably speaks quite a lot to the ideal reader and you're the younger person who can identify with perhaps not feeling in their place in their in, you know as the as the french say uh, on their plate uh, <laughs> they don't feel quite on the, on their plate in society and and maybe that they're not quite fitting in and she certainly describes that extremely well as you say and especially in the opening chapters um, where she's kind of forced to go along with this whole well i've got to be the mockingjay in order to get what i want and it kind of doesn't really happen for her. Well, I don't know. I mean, it does and it doesn't, right? Because what is she trying to get in the beginning? PETA, I won't spoil it, but I mean, does she get what she wants? Maybe it's, it's, but the damaged goods line, that's really, that really sticks because Mm. everyone by the end of the book is damaged goods. It's really, there are no happy places, really. I mean, you could read the epilogue as being happy, but not a happy book. Uh, you you brought up that it's well written. What do you think about this from a writer's perspective? What are, uh, w- yeah, what do you think of it from a writer's perspective? Um, well, like you, I was rereading just recently, obviously in preparation for the show, and one of the things that struck me, particularly after comparison to some other books I've recently been reading, was the richness of her paragraph text. You know, she's really either it's either it comes out that way or it's well edited, but it's really not simple text. You do get a lot of richness of the characterization and and characterization, whilst it's important, isn't important until the character actually does something. So I think mm-hmm. what what Suzanne Collins reveals through the the internalization of Katniss and what she's going through in this kind of what I think is damaged goods, um, she really writes beautifully about that. and therefore it then makes sense as to why Katniss makes the decision she does and I think that's the mark of a great book is when you totally believe why the character makes the decisions they do yeah and and that's one of one of the things I wrote down too she was so true to the characters at no point at no point did you say no that wouldn't have happened and and it when you go back and read the books I haven't reread the first and the second but I've reread the third and when you look back at Gale and who he is and who he was from the beginning, the decisions he makes in book three totally fit. But because you don't see, I mean, I mean that's the va- the value of the whole arc of a character that 
you're you're seeing in one situation, but as the situation changes, he his desire for revenge really causes him to be this master tactician in such a way that of course ruins his friendship and and really gets into uh, breaks up his relationships but it's who he was from the beginning and is just taken to the extreme just keeps going to the next level and and she does a masterful job of that so she really knows her arcs that's a very good point actually yeah gail's bitterness which is sort of only really seeded in in the first book um really drives him desperately in in that third book so but like you say i think interesting you say it's it's not a hollywood ending so it is going to be interesting to see how they portray that type of ending and how true they stay to the book and particularly since they've decided to go in in two parts as well which is quite extraordinary so whether that's because you know there's the depth the depth of the book there is so much happening in there plot wise in the sense of action um or whether it's because they're trying to get across that uh depth of internalization for all the characters yeah i'm I'm looking forward to the movie for sure good yeah definitely i see it with my i been seeing it with my wife and my my parents uh, the last two Thanksgivings, so we're gonna have to keep the tradition going. <laughs> so, takeaways. We we have a yep. section here. We want to do takeaways from this book. One takeaway I have, and and I, you can disagree with me or agree with me on this. Tell the story you want to tell no matter what the critics say. She obviously knew. I mean, she's a smart woman. She knew some people were going to hate book three. She knew it. She she also probably knew why books one and two were such big commercial successes. So she knew what she was doing, and she did it. And that's I'm impressed with that, and I think every writer should stick to their guns. Well, I'm with you on that one, Brian, for sure. I think uh, you know she she. It's a good book. Um, it, it, it's from a reader's perspective, it could be disappointing if you're expecting the same outcomes as book one and book two. So in that sense, it's quite clever because, as you say, it takes us somewhere where we're really not expecting, um, and, and and that's the mark of a good writer who's prepared to do that for sure. I think another takeaway for me is that the perpetual story of the big bad empire versus the rebellion is still well and truly alive and can be mastered in many, many different ways. Uh, Mm -hmm. If the writing is good, if the characterization leads to good character decisions that, that drive the story forward. So, you know, we could argue, well, it's just another, you know, star Wars, it's just another this, that, the other, but it's still a great book. I completely agree with that one because it, it's all about that steel like an artist. You have your own life and you have your own spin. So even if you take an old tale, if you imbue it with m- enough of yourself, it's going to become something special. Well said. Well said. Do you have any more takeaways? That I have one like more to- takeaway. One more takeaway. And we, we already brought it up, but be true to your characters. When you set up a character... Whether you're putting little bits of them in in one part and just waiting for a payoff, be true to it because there's nothing tougher for a reader to stomach than seeing a character they either love or they hate could just do something that doesn't make any sense. It takes them out of the story. Nice. Yeah, nice. So uh, I have a prompt. I wrote a prompt. Ooh. Uh, something we're going to try in this in this uh, podcast. And uh, when I'm not writing fiction, I write creative writing prompts. And so here's a prompt for uh, the Hunger Games in general, really. And we'll write this in the description of this video so that you can copy and paste it and use it as you will. You can enter your responses in the comments to this video if you so choose. Prompt of the week. The Hunger Games series centers around a dangerous game that puts people at risk. Imagine that you were part of a sadistic game with completely different rules. What would the rules be and how would you escape? 
That's my Whoa. problem. Oh. There's a book in that, Brian. There's, There's a, book a book in, in that. that. There's probably been five books. <laughs> <laughs> in, and in speaking of the uh, speaking of writing prompts, uh, you really should go to uh, buildcreativewritingideas.com to have a look at Brian's fantastic range of prompts. They really do get you thinking. If you're a beginning writer or whether you're an experienced old hand, there's definitely something in there that will get you thinking about your current story. And from a reader's perspective, I think it's fun to start to take more from the story than just the action that you've read, but let that seep in. And sometimes these writing prompts can do exactly that as well. So next time you read The Hunger Games, think about that. You know, what situations are you in in your own life where you are faced with risk and and it's, you, you have to be proactive in order to overcome that? I think, the you know, these are great things to ponder. I totally agree. I totally agree. And thanks for the plug. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. Well, I think that brings us up to the end of episode one. Obviously, it went a little longer than we expected, but hey, we had no idea what we're getting into. So, <laughs> um, yeah. But so I'm Brian Cohen. That's Robert Scanlon. Check us out. We are going to have some websites and stuff up soon, but we're the split, and we hope to be doing a lot of these episodes for you. Let us know what you think here or on iTunes for the audio version. Thank you and enjoy mocking Jay in your own way. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Bye guys. Thank you guys for watching. Somewhere on this page is a subscribe button to the split channel. We do reviews every week. We would love it if you followed us every single week. Is, isn't that right, Robin? That's exactly right. Follow us now. Hit the subscribe button. Do it. <laughs>